Hey everybody, Nina of She Knows SEO here, and today we are going to be reviewing a blog that actually improved post helpful content update. So I think it's really important to be able to see examples of that, and I'm very appreciative to Mike Donovan of Stay New England and of Niche Twins on Twitter for allowing me to go through his site. Now I asked about a month ago and then completely lost track of my life, so we finally got into it. <laughs> but we're gonna be running through um, a little bit of his site and what I think is working and the reasons that he's having this success. Now, I am going to be giving my personal opinions on some elements of his site as well, because that's what I do when I do audits and I can't keep my opinions to myself. So please everybody take this with the grain of salt it's intended. Um, this is meant to be almost entirely positive. It basically will be. There's like two little things that I noticed that I would just do differently. And that's my difference, I guess, the reason that I am not Mike. So again, thank you so much to Mike. I'm going to link to his Twitter um, in the description of this video so y'all can go check him out. I really recommend giving him a follow and signing up for the Niche Twins newsletter. They give out really great information every single week and they recently bought KeySearch, well, part of it. And KeySearch is my favorite SEO like keyword research tool. It is like genuinely the best. So I highly recommend checking them out because also they have good taste. So I definitely will also link to my walkthrough of KeySearch. Again, it is the tool that I love. It is all I had to get into Mediavine. I had no other SEO tools of any sort to do any sort of research or whatever, you don't need them. It's like 120 bucks a year or something, like very inexpensive compared to things like Ahrefs and SEMrush that are like, that's kind of the monthly price. So I really recommend giving that a check, but let's get back to why we're here today. So proof is in the pudding. Let's take a look at Ahrefs where you can see that Mike has just kept going up. <laughs> things have just done well for this site. This is a newer site that Mike has been building in public, which I think is a really interesting choice. Most people don't choose to do that. In fact, when I first kind of showed up in the SEO sphere and used to talk about my site all the time, people were like, don't do that. That's a terrible idea. Okay, <laughs> fair. So I listened for a while and was like, sure, that's fine. Um, but I think it's really cool to see someone actually building in public, especially a travel blog. It's really interesting to get to like watch this process. Mike is very open about it on Twitter, um, but the important thing is that his entire traffic is not just coming from Twitter. You can see here, these are actually the rankings that he is getting basically um, organic traffic from Google. So it's rankings, his, uh, sorry, I should scroll down so you guys can see the rankings. It's um, his rankings and his organic traffic. It is not just people clicking through from Twitter every single time. I definitely think that there is an element of that, but I am going to be talking about that after. So here we can see, uh, where is it? So here we can see the helpful content update and things were basically flatlined. Um, then when the core update, I think that was around core update and spam update. Yeah, just there. Um, we saw the uptick. So Mike has been crushing it. I think it's really great. I want to share just a couple little things. So currently the site is hosted on Cloudways. To my knowledge, this is a free tool, so it is not perfect. Uh, it also looks like Mike is using Generate Press. I did confirm that by looking at the code. Now, I have never used Generate Press. I recently also did an article on She Knows SEO where I went through over 100 travel blogs and really deep dived into the top 20, and a large percent of the top 20 were using Generate Press. So I'm going to be running a test on that and putting it onto one of my sites to see how it goes, see how easy it is to use, and we will be doing a comparison of it versus Cadence eventually. We have to get through the insanity of Black Friday first. <laughs> so it'll happen eventually, but I think that's interesting to note. Uh, now I was looking at the um, kind of specs for the site for the page speed and seeing what was maybe slowing it down. This is for the home page and it's loading in about 3.8 seconds on the first load. We can see here if we go over, uh, it's about 3.1 when you do the repeat view. It is basically usable before that, except for the fact that like it takes a minute for that first header to load. So Google won't think it's usable yet. So I think that's something that does need to be changed pretty quickly to ensure that that image is loading as soon as possible. And then the convert kit button um, and opt-in is taking a minute as well. And I do wonder if those two things could be hindering the site a little bit, not massively, just a little bit. Um, three seconds is kind of one to three seconds is the goal. 3.1, 3.8, 3 
still very good. Like, definitely not we're in problem territory or anything like that. But I just think interesting to know, something to work on a little bit. And when I looked in similar web, it looks like the site is getting, it only lets me do last 28 days right now. I don't know, it's mad at me. I've done something. So we're gonna do 28 days. The last 28 days, I've got about 18,891 page views. Um, this is gonna be from everywhere. So it's going to include organic traffic, direct traffic, social traffic, and discover traffic, which I do think is important to note because there is this massive period, which was where one of Mike's posts got picked up on discover. And don't worry, we're going to take a look at it because he shared it openly. I'm not just going to randomly out things. <laughs> These are all things that Mike has shared very publicly. So I think it's really interesting to get to see kind of all of this as it's unfolding. The site has grown a fair amount fairly quickly, to be honest, um, especially because Mike is not like doing the usual SEO thing, which I also don't really do, where it's like you seed the site with 100 posts in a month and they're all kind of meh and then eventually maybe some take off. He is spending the time and making a quality site and a quality brand, which I think is why he was rewarded so heavily. So let's take a look at the site and actually talk about some of the things that Mike is doing very, very, very well. I am going to note my one qualm first though. My one issue is I do not think that this light green color um, that he has down here for the Meet Mike and Mackenzie, Mackenzie is his partner, um, and for the like menu bar up here, it's kind of used for all of the links. I do not think it is accessible. I think it is too light and I think it needs to be a little bit darker to be high contrast enough. Like if we used kind of the button color on the convert kit one, I think we'd be golden. Right now, it is a struggle bus to see. I also think the font of those two areas here right now up at the menu and this little button is too small, very hard to see. I admit though that I have the worst eyesight. So even with my glasses, I am not perfect, but something to consider. I don't know a lot about New England, so I don't know the target demographic of people who like to go there. Um, I genuinely had to Google it to be like, what is this? <laughs> like, I thought it was a state. I did not know, that, or a city. I did not know that it was a region of the US um, because I don't know US geography. I'm not from there. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> so interesting to learn, but just something I will note um, that I would double check with an accessibility checker, uh, but equally would probably play it safe and just increase font size in case the demographic might be a little bit older. Um, if you're on Twitter, you'll know that Niche Site Lady basically always says, try to find old people as your demographic because it, amazing ROIs. So if there is a contingent of um, old people in your demographic, I don't know, kind of skew to them a little bit with the bigger sizes. Not massive, just a little bit, like two points bigger, I think would do it for us. Then we have um, the homepage kind of breaks down a little bit of everything. So we've got the opt-in, we've got some information and the really important thing, it's a very short and sweet bio, but it immediately says firsthand experience visiting some of these places, um, doing the things, actively doing it. And that like, it's our home. We live here, we are local to this area. You can even see it up here, like a local. And I think that those are trust signals to Google. Like it is said a lot. That's the point of it. Like you, the point is that they are locals, so they talk about it because they know the area. And I think that's great and something that they are definitely being rewarded for. Um, the other cool thing that Mike has instituted recently that got me off my butt, because I have wanted to do an interview series on my site for probably two and a half years, and I've never gotten around to it. So because of him, I have like three in the pipeline now, which is pretty cool. But Mike started doing an interview series. And interestingly, different than what I'm doing, um, but 100% I was inspired by him, is he's talking to business owners, not to people who've just been to New England and had a good time, or just people who live here. He is like, okay, let's go to the business owner and say, hi, I'm Mike of Stay New England. Can we promote your brand? 100% free, just doing an interview. And so he's building relationships with these people. Mike is currently doing these over email, which he said on Twitter that like he's just emailing them a list of questions sort of thing. and it's helpful because he is building those connections with these companies. Not only does that build a connection with these people, it builds trust in the area. And I really believe it's going to lead to great things for him in terms of partnerships. 
because other businesses will see this down the line. He will get to have um, click data of like how many uh, users he's attracting to these places, uh, outward clicks from the actual posts themselves to be able to prove later for sponsored experiences. Like look at how dedicated our audience is and look at like we have proof that it converts even without actually having to do a sponsored post first. So I think this is really, really smart. I definitely think it's going to get him some free stuff too down the line for sure. <laughs> um, which like, I mean, who doesn't want free stuff? That's great. Especially if it's fun travel stuff. There's a reason so many of us start travel blogs, but I think that's going to really benefit him long term. So I think this is such a great idea. Um, if you've had an idea like this in your head for a while, do it. I don't think that everyone needs to have an interview series at all. Just like I don't think everyone needs to have a forum inside of their site. I know people think that's like the quick solution to not having too much SEO content. I, I don't know that that's the case. Then we have recent posts, not a blog roll, just a few recent posts. Um, I would do things a little bit differently with this homepage, but I do think it is very strong. Um, I just kept trying to click on all these pretty images, but they're just, it seems like they're just a carousel or gallery, I guess, of images that show that they are locals and they live there, they do the thing. I definitely thought it was like an Instagram thing to start, which I would have been like, no, 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 get that out of here. <laughs> like that's such a speed suck. It's not, however, they're also tiny images. So it is hard that like I cannot get to see more of them. I don't know where they're based. So I understand why they're there, but I'm not 100% sure for user experience yet if this is the right way to go. And I think the way that you learn that is you test and you see if people are like, giving you that feedback or if it's just me wanting to see more. <laughs> now we can go through the site just a tiny bit. I don't want to spend a million years going through everything, but you can see that on these pages, um, Mike does give information about the fact that like they know this place. There are like uh, custom, sorry, I meant to say original images. There are little bits of details of like um, their experience, like even saying here are our favorite uh, destinations definitely think like Block Island, I wouldn't have noticed that was a link. It needs an underline or something. And again, I'm just, I don't know, maybe I have a personal vendetta against this color of green. I'm not sure. I also don't know what to call it. So I've just been calling it like seafoam in my head, but that sounds pretentious. So I'm not sure. I don't know if that's what you would call it. <laughs> but we've got a lot of posts here. We also have like the team section, and I think the team section does well, um, where we have both Mike and his wife. So it's not just one person. This does look a bit more like a business to some extent. And again, I'm not saying like you need to have a business partner. Not everyone does. I run She Knows SEO by myself. <laughs> like I don't, you don't need to have a co-founder. But if you do, you definitely want to speak about both of yourselves and have information on that uh, that is on your site. Now, I want to first look at um, the post that went, did really well on Google Discover. Oh, it doesn't want to show me the post that did well on Google Discover. Okay, we're going to have to go back. I think it might have been over here. That's interesting to note, though, that it, because it definitely was about reasons that they love it. Maybe it was love instead. Yes, here it is. Why we love Block Island. So that's not their fault. That was my fault. I thought it was named something different than it is. Uh, this is the post that did really well on Google Discover. It was like, why we love Block Island, a hidden gem of New England. Um, and it did big things. So this kind of suddenly took off on Google Discover. It is definitely a post that I would say at first glance is not SEO-ified, I guess, SEO'd or whatever. Um, it is a little bit more conversational. Now, I would immediately get mad at people usually that this is not a numbered list but i think it's interesting that it did really well without the numbered list i do not know enough about google discover to like say that that's for sure a thing that works i would still say for user experience i would want to have a numbered list but interestingly it didn't need it and this is very much like a conversational easy post about like just the things that this family enjoys and loves with tons of original pictures. And I do think the pictures are a big part of the Google Discover kind of traction. Um, that is something that is important for Google Discover is having bright images like this, very high contrast images that are appealing. I am a terrible photographer, so that is, I don't know, sometimes I do wonder if I will ever be okay on Google Discover because of that. But we've got a lot happening here that could be picked up into Google Discover in some way, shape, or form. 
So if you want to deep dive into this a bit more, feel free. It is why we love Block Island. Um, literally staynewengland.com slash why we love Block Island. So you'll be able to find it and you can read through it a bit if you want. I also want to highlight this little note here. This from the author is something that Mike started doing to kind of give a bit more information about his personal experience and his family's experience early on. There is a theory that um, with the helpful content update that they were using AI algorithms that is proven um, to do the testing, but there's a theory that it can only read the first thousand words of a post. And that is why short form content was doing so well. And most of us put our main experience, our bio, in the footer, like, or almost in the footer, at the end of the post. So putting something like this up here, having your experience early on, could definitely be helping. And that is something that I have not tested yet, just something I've seen kind of mentioned a number of times. So something to consider if you don't have that there, or if you don't put it in your intro. Now, this intro very clearly mentions it. Like, he and his wife were both born and raised in Massachusetts. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Again, I don't know the US, so I could be butchering this. Like the time that I said Oaxaca for a whole audit when it's called Oaxaca. That was bad, that was really bad. So I think this is a great example of a post that is very much more narrative and personal. Um, kind of the post, interestingly, that Google kind of trained us not to write for a long time, but it did really well for Discover. So take that with a grain of salt. Again, I don't know enough about Discover to say if that is perfectly the thing that you should do or not. Now, when we go oops, into Ahrefs, if it will let me, we can take a quick look at the organic keywords. And we can just see some of the different things that are ranking. And what you'll notice immediately is that Block Island is showing up a lot. Now, traffic is definitely not like skyrocketed for this site. It is not like at 50K immediately. And I don't think it should be, it takes a minute. Also, a lot of these things seem a bit more summery. Beaches, um, the restaurant, it looks like it's kind of like a beach place that you would go in summer. So I do expect next summer will be much more of the high season for this site. Even if we zoom out on um, similar web to the last three months, we will see a traffic drop. Um, it, I'll be honest though, every site I've checked has a traffic drop from July and like something happened in August. I don't know what happened with the similar web algorithm, but definitely it looks like traffic dropped. I do think that is largely seasonality because we did see that like organic traffic pretty much kept going and rankings were even if not going up. So just an interesting note, but what you'll also notice is topical authority here. So it's not that Mike is jumping around from Maine to New Hampshire to wherever every single post. And that is something that I tested on one of my sites is typically I start with like location-based topical authority. So instead of doing like things to do in each city, I would do things to do in Block Island and then answer all the other questions about Block Island. That's what Mike has done. And I do believe that that's a big part of the success here is that users who come to the site for Block Island bars can then find a bunch of other stuff. They're not then getting bars in every other city or state, or I almost called it provinces, <laughs> can tell how Canadian I am, but they're getting the information they need. And I do think that is really important in travel blogs. Like the way that I think about it is like planning an itinerary for someone. What else do they need to know? So if I bring someone to the site for things to do in Block Island and then have no other information for them, and definitely, guys, I understand you write your first post on that like pillar. It takes a minute. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like the strategy wise. If you then jump to all these other places, how have you helped your user? Now you've abandoned them in Rome and suddenly you're talking about like, I don't know, Milan or something, which to my knowledge is not an easy day trip from Rome. I do believe it would be a couple of days to like actually get to see stuff. So not super helpful. And for example, with like, um, there is a post about uh, dog friendly hotels. I just traveled with my dog across the US and when I would search for dog friendly things to do, I then needed restaurants, I then needed hotels, I then needed all these other bits and pieces. And so if I was just being given best dog friendly hikes in every city or state, fine, but kind of only half of what I need. And like, maybe I'll come back later, but right now, even if you answered my question, you, you have nothing else for me, so I'm gonna go somewhere else. And that's not great. 
So I do think this is a really great way to build that topical authority, connect everything, and make it clear to Google that you know what you're talking about, especially about a location. Another thing that I think is really cool about what Mike is doing is that he's attracting backlinks naturally. He's going to get a backlink from me talking about this. I'm going to link to the site in my YouTube description. I'm going to make a post about it and he's going to get a link that way. So it's actually interesting that like building in public is risky in some ways and in other ways really beneficial because you're getting those backlinks of people talking about it. And I think that's something to consider for SEOs as well. For beginner travel bloggers, unfortunately, like even if you build in public, this sounds really harsh, but like no one cares <laughs> to some extent um, because you don't have an audience yet to put it in front of. Now, if you were already like getting, um, I don't know, if you have a million followers on TikTok or Instagram or something and you start a blog and share it with them, that's going to have the same effect. People are going to go and check it out, especially if it's related or semi-related to what you're already known for. So if I follow, um, there's like a blind woman, Molly Burke, who I follow on TikTok, who talks a lot about guide dog travel and accessible travel. If she suddenly made an accessible travel blog, you better bet I'm going to go read it, like 100%. If she made a fashion blog, I wouldn't because I don't care about that. I mean, like, I don't know, I owned two pairs of pants up until a month ago. So I'm um, like, I am not the person to care about fashion, but I'd probably still check it out once in a while. And a lot of people do follow her for like that sub pillar of her social media content. So I think that this is an interesting strategy and a good way to attract um, people to your site to some extent. There is obviously risk to building in public. I mean, even me sharing this now, technically, yes, if any of you guys had a New England blog, you could try for these keywords. But that's what I think is also interesting is that Mike even said when he first revealed this site, because I think he got a couple posts up on it and then fixed them up a bit after, he couldn't half-ass it because all of these people were going to see it. So every post had to be the best post. It had to be incredibly helpful to everybody and it had to be good enough that yeah, just all of the millions of people on Twitter, Twitter especially seems bad for this, who just want to steal your keywords and then like get rich quick or something. It couldn't happen. They could not beat this bulletproof post, even this pizza post here. Mike even asked on Twitter, I think this was really interesting. If you were going to like read best pizza in Beacon Hill, would you expect only pizzerias or would any place with pizza be okay? And I was like, that's, I never even thought about that. I probably think pizzeria first and then other places, like kind of bonus, also these places have pizza. But it was really cool seeing all the responses. And I've learned a lot actually about what different people, typically men, which is interesting. I think he does have more of a male following than any of my sites. Um, so maybe a little bit different, but what people think and like the way that they would kind of handle this. So I do think that's quite interesting. Um, you can see the posts here and go through them if you want to. I think a lot of the helpful information comes from kind of the bonus information, making things easy. Like there is a Google Maps option. There are original pictures for, I think, basically everything, to be honest. I don't remember. Yeah, every single one in this post has an original photo, which is great. So I think the site is doing really, really well for a number of reasons. I do think building in public forces Mike to do better <laughs> to some extent, um, to not get lazy, where a lot of us do over time. It just happens, unfortunately. Like, especially if you were trying to get 100 posts up in a month, quality is gonna go way downhill. So take your time and really produce quality content. Even Mike is doing probably more than most beginners would be able to do with any new site because he's done this before. Mike has been in the game for a long time. This is just a new site, it is not his first site by any means. So don't 100% compare yourself to this with your beginner site. It takes a little bit longer. That's just the way it is. But learn from some of these elements. Look at things in this post that are super helpful to you. To me, immediately being able to see, okay, number one, I'm not getting 20,000 words for each of them about the history of pizza because I would not care. Like the amount of times this summer that I was searching for the best dog-friendly hikes in Banff and I would have to wade through about 3,000, 5,000 words of other content about Banff before I would even get to my answer. 
it drove me nuts and I would just leave that page because I was impatient, I was tired. I probably had one bar of service anyway. I was camping, so I was just like, I need to like hold my phone at this weird angle to try and get any service, so give me the answer now, please. I wasn't gonna wait. And this site kind of expects that of people. It's gonna give them the information immediately. So in this first one, like you can even see, it doesn't go through every single style of pizza, the best things on the menu. It doesn't go through all of that. It literally says, okay, like the best pizza is here. Question answered, easy peasy. Also, I'm not the only one who thinks it. It won something fancy, great. Um, and it even says like, this is the one I like, uh, and there's a picture of it below. Indoor seating, I don't know that I would care about that, but probably someone does <laughs> to some extent. So interesting, I think my uh, customer avatars have different things they would worry about. For example, like if you have a, I don't know, a kid site or something, like a family travel site, you're gonna wanna be very specific about like, if it's like babies, do they have high chairs that they offer? Is there room for a stroller beside the table? For me with my service dog, what type of tables are there? Like genuinely, I will have to go on Google and try to figure out what the table is to see if he can fit underneath it easily. Or if I'm gonna need to ask for extra seating, maybe call ahead. Some places just aren't chill with service dogs even though they have to be. And I just, I'm not gonna fight someone if they don't want my dog there, we will just go somewhere else, it's fine. So little things like that I might care about and my audience might care about, but maybe not Mike's. So good to know. Um, I also love, this is so important guys, negatives are okay. <laughs> like it is so okay to share a negative. And I think that this is really helpful. Like if you've come um, for a weekend trip here and this is the best pizza and you didn't know they were closed, that would suck. So I really like that it says, no, ne there is a negative. It's just not open on weekends. You gotta go somewhere else. And then it has the next best option right here. So I think this is really, really great. Lots to learn from. I really appreciate Mike letting me go through his site um, to share with y'all. I mean, definitely some little things that I would think that I would wanna do a bit differently. Um, if y'all want another video on that, I'm happy to. But overall, I think this is such a great site. I think a DA of 17, um, getting this much traffic, especially in the off season, having such intense growth in the keywords um, and rankings because Mike is putting in the work. He is doing excellent things with the site. And I think that's something to remember with your own sites. A lot of us got into that point of just like pushing for money so hard or pushing for traffic so hard and just like getting that certain number of posts that we kind of forgot our love of travel. And I definitely did. I just got like stressed this summer traveling because like I was trying to get a million things done all the time. I felt like I needed to manage this whole team of writers and do all these things. I didn't really want to do. I love writing myself. I love going to the place and doing the thing myself. And I'm getting back to that more and more now. And I actually almost appreciate the helpful content update for that. As much as I hate it, I do think that like there were some posts that I got hit on, especially on that like other site where I was saying the different, I was just like, okay, this at best bars, let's say in 20 different cities. I wasn't going to all those cities. I don't drink anymore. So I definitely couldn't either. But it didn't make sense for the user and I get that, like that was justified getting hit. And I think a lot of things that I'm seeing, even if you do have the experience, you do have the best knowledge, you do have all those things, if it's not being portrayed the right way, that's a problem. So take a look at Mike's site as well, learn some more for yourself. Um, spend that time really writing those excellent posts, putting in the original photos, putting in the original experience. Um, we're in a weird world right now with SEO, I do think it still is relevant for sure. I think niche sites are 100% relevant, but we're gonna be topsy-turvy for a bit. It happens, unfortunately. We just gotta deal with it and adjust as best we can. And I do think providing the best content is gonna be the best way. Even if like the way we structure it changes a few times over the next couple months, that's okay. You can always restructure a post, especially with like ChatGPT being able to reformat stuff for you. So focus really heavily right now on getting out great content like Mike is doing here, uh, putting your experience out there and having some fun with it too. I think that is important. Um, if you absolutely hate it, don't do it. <laughs> it's kind of the way I would see it. I am very much like you need to have some passion for it. Kind of the 80-20 rule of like you should enjoy it 80% of the time um, and hate it 20% of the time. And if the updates for that 20% 
that's okay. You guys can persevere. So I hope this really helped and you guys found it interesting. Um, definitely click around on Stay New England. Check out Mike um, on Twitter. I will definitely link that in the description. And use Key Search. <laughs> it's the best tool, honestly. It's great. I'm just using Ahrefs here because the traffic graphs in Key Search, I have to click around a bunch more. So check it out. I will link my video for Key Search below. Um, yeah, and I hope to see you guys soon. If you have requests for other things for me to do videos on, please drop them in the comments. I am always open to other ideas. Um, and just so y'all know, my SEO roadmap course is going to be on Black Friday special starting November 1st. So check that out. Um, you'll learn more about that on my email list, which I will add in the description as well, where you guys can get my free content audit checklist. So if you want to update your site to be a bit more like Mike's, check out that checklist. It's more of a 12 page workbook to get you guys to update your content. Okay, I hope everyone has a lovely day and I will see you very soon. Bye.